Hi, welcome to product review by Watt Hour. In this video, we're going to test this ZKSJVA4X constant current back boost converter with LCD with constant current that you can use for power supply and also charge your battery. We are going to test the input and output at different voltages, all industry standard voltage of 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, 15, 24, and 30 volts with the input and output. And after that, I'm going to show you how to charge one cell battery, which is suitable and also unconventional uh, charging of, let's say, three or four cells. I'm going to show you how to charge it. Also, I'm going to show you how to limit the current using the constant current, how to set it. Uh, in between, also from time to time, I'm going to show you the thermal image and see which spot of the module is getting hot the most. Also, we're going to have a look at the ripple level in the output signal. Let's get started with this by visiting our website, watthour.ca. This module is sold on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, with different name, but this is the actual model, SZSJVA4X. This is very tongue-twisting model, but it is. And many other stores are labeling it as 35 watts, constant current, step up, step down, converter, and then also they mentioned on the title, input voltage, output voltage, and sometimes voltmeter, ampere meter, and so many other things because nobody follows in those stores the model number. And here the input voltage is 5.5 volts to 30 volts, and many times people ask questions, so we cannot go below, below this. And the output can go up to 0 0.5, so you can go lower up to 0 0.5, and the maximum is 30, so you cannot get above 30. This side is the input, that's the output, and the back side we have all these components, we have display driver, microcontroller, uh, boost converter, and this is the op amp that gets the current. This is a shunt resistor here, 0 0.025 or 25 milliohm resistor, which all the current will pass through this. And this measures the voltage and proportionally will tell us what is the current. So this comes with these tabs, so this uh, standoff that is holding it. And on this side, we have all these components, which I'm going to uh, ex uh, explain one by one. The input voltage is connected on this side and we have the output and then we have two um, uh, LED here. It, it says on and then we have constant current LED. Uh, right now it is green and when this turns on it shows that the voltage has reached at a constant current value. We can set the current from this potentiometer. This is a multi-turn potentiometer and this is constant voltage, we will set the voltage. When we say multi-turn, it means you have to turn it at least 15 to 20 times uh, to set the change sometimes. So don't give up when you rotate it with one or two, so it is multi-turn. And then we have two push buttons here, that's for selecting what is displayed on the screen, for example. Now, right now it shows output, and if I press this again, it shows the input. And using this, for example, this is output, using this you can turn off the output so as you can see it's being drained slowly so it just turns off the output not the whole module the screen shows the input and output voltage but the current and power is not for the input so keep that in mind that this current is for the output when I you, when I press this it changes input output voltage but if I press and hold it for a little longer it shows from a power to current you see the watt change I'm holding it at an angle because currently if I hold the camera like this you will see it like that because the camera is on top of it at 90 degrees so on the desk or anywhere you put it you will not be on top so you will be a little tilted like this so you will see it so it's very uh, viewable and nice and it has backlight so in the dark if i turn the light off you will see it that it is viewable uh, this is priced 
between five to twenty dollars depending where you get it and how fast you want it i will provide you the link for purchasing this product below the video in the description now let's have a look at the components one by one so i'm going to explain as much as possible all these components let's have a look at this one so this is the nce 6075 and here is a data sheet for nce 6075k this is in channel enhanced mosfet and the maximum drain current is 75 ampere and now let's have a look at this piece and that is the d4184 and this is a data sheet for AOD4184 this is from alpha omega 40 volt in channel MOSFET the drain source voltage is 40 volts and the drain current can go up to 50 ampere and the resistance of drain source is less than 7 milli ohm at 10 volts and 4.5 at 4.5 volts it is 9.5 milli ohm let's look at, at these two diodes these are ss56 here's a, the data sheet for ss56 a 5 ampere surface mount shot key diode and let's have a look at this chip this is ht1621b and here is the manufacturer webpage 32 by 4 lcd controller for in out microcontroller and now let's have a look at this chip N76E003A T20 from New Voton. This is a microcontroller. And here's the data sheet for N76E003 from New Voton. This is 1T8051 based microcontroller. Let's have a look at this chip. This is FP5139 and FP5139 is a from feeling technology a synchronous boost converter let's have a look at this chip and this is the LM358 and this is a single supply dual operational amplifier they have different versions but the surface mount uh, version is used on this module this is a 0 0.025 ohm resistor where all the current passes and we are measuring the current using this resistor and this is the resistor 0 0.025 or 25 milli ohm surface mount resistor where all the current passes through this so the current is detected using this shunt resistor and here this is labeled as Y1 this is general purpose NPN silicon transistor and here the marking on the transistor is Y1 as you can see this is the D882 and here is a data sheet for D882 it is a NPN transistor this constant current potentiometer is 503 this is 50 kilo ohm and the potentiometer for voltage is again 503 or 50 kilo ohm resistor this inductor at the middle is 2.2 micro henry the module does not come with any casing so it will be very fragile but at least we have these uh, plastic pieces that you can insert so from the bottom it is being protected So that's the minimum that it has but you have to protect this properly also the module has these terminals where you can solder your wires permanently and the because majority of the heat will be dissipated on these two MOSFETs here and diode and they have provided this uh, heat sink here although this this is small if you want to uh, cool it down find some kind of heat sink that is standing and large but the base should be on this size the base should be this size so we can just put it
adhesive here so we can simply remove it and attach it so let me put the heat sink length of the module is 66.3 millimeters by 48.1 millimeters depth of the module is 21.1 millimeters Now let's see how we can set the amount of current that passes. This is the input and that's the output. So now I have the input of 30 volts connected. If I press this, it will show me uh, the output. For example, that's the air voltage. To set the current first, rotate this counterclockwise, meaning like this. Until you see this light will turn on, which means with the minimum current, even with zero, it will not allow the current. So we are setting it with a minimum. Now this is on. Now when this is on, now you can short circuit this. The output is now short circuited. And then we are going to rotate this. Let's say you want to set this to 1.5 ampere, for example. So rotate this to 1.5 and you will see that the current slowly will increase. So I'm going, that's 800, 900, 1, 1, that's 1.2, 1.4. So that's 1.5 or 1,500. And now if I disconnect this, pay attention to the light and pay attention to the voltage. The voltage is already zero because it is short circuited, correct? It should be zero. Now the voltage went back and the current is now limited. Now if you connect it to anything, it will allow only 1.5. And for example, if we short circuit it, you will see that it goes up to 1.5 and reduces the voltage. So it keeps the current constant. Mm, let's say 3 ampere. So 3 point and the output over current protection kicked in. Now, now I have to turn this off, the whole module, turn it on again and again. Now we can see it says over current protection. I'll have to rotate this back a few times and then turn it off. Turn on, now it's short circuit, so 3.6. Let's increase it and see as, at what value this will go. So that is the maximum. 3.7. Now, now it's 3.7, 3.8, so 3.9 turned it on, I know, so 3.8 is the value, now let me just disconnect this, so that is the maximum current that we set. The maximum amount of current that you get from this depends on how, um, how much voltage you want. For example, it cannot exceed above 35 watts, which means if you multiply the output current times voltage, if it is above 35, it's not allowed. And for example, if the output voltage is 30 volts, if you want to find the current, so 35 divided by 30, you can get only 1.16 ampere at the output if you want 30 volts. But if you want 10, then 35 divided by 10, you will get 3.5 ampere. We are going to test it. This is just without any test. I'm just presenting you the number. Let me just check the output voltage. I've connected my input power here. The input, the negative goes through this exits back and comes here so we are reading the input current here and then 
my electronic load is connected here so we will read the output voltage and output current in here this screen also I am trying to show you the input voltage so this will be the input voltage and also the output power will be displayed but I'm going to show it with other device so you constantly will see the input current right now it shows the output current at 11 milliampere uh, and that's because my electronic load is connected and if I disconnect my electronic load it shows zero so your question would be what is the amount of current that it needs and uh, when it is idle here 30 milliampere so it constantly needs 30 milliampere to operate let me turn it off when I turn it off it becomes 11 milliampere when I turn it on Thirty milliampere. Now this is the output voltage. Now the input cannot go below five point five volts. Uh, so seven volts, six volts. Pay attention. So we see when it is dropped. Six. 6.4 now the output the input current increases which means this works very hard now to 5 so this is 5.7 so 5.4 still we are getting so that's almost 5.5 but let's see input current has increased for but the voltage has uh, dropped but this is not trustworthy for example if I put one ampere at the output the voltage has dr significantly dropped about 300 or 200 the recommended voltage is 5.5 so we will not go below 5.5 6, 6 volts and then let's change the output voltage from here and see what we get here I've connected a voltage sensor to this so my uh, output can read it separately uh, if there is any drop in the wire we will read correct reading now the output is 12 volts let's increase it so 30 volts I'm rotating it uh, let me bring you the sound for the click so you will hear this click so we are at the maximum now let's go with the minimum I'm going counterclockwise so that is 0 0.5 volts this is more accurate so keep the that in mind that this is how it reads input voltage is 6 volts as you can see here and the output voltage is 3.3 .3 volts you see it here and let's turn this on the module is already on let's set it to 2 ampere and turn it on now the input voltage shows 5.98 that's 6 volts and the output is 3.3 supposed to be 3.3 I have sensing a voltage probe here so I am sensing the voltage there is no drop in the line but still you see that the voltage has dropped from 3.3 to 3.26 uh, 40 millivolts drop here now let's increase it to 3 ampere this is now 3 ampere as you can see the output 
and you can see also the input so the total power is now 9.7 and for this one also we can see the current and the voltage so multiply it and you will get the efficiency but I'm not going to calculate it now 3 and if I go 4 I went 4 ampere and as you can see it reached at 3.8 and uh, constant current is now doesn't allowing more than 3.8 so it reduces the voltage to keep that current because we need constant current if I go 3 it goes back so let me go to 3.1 so as you can see here it's 3 3.1 3.2 3.3 3.4 3.5 very cool 3.6 So the current has reached at this value here. Now, if I want to increase it, I can just rotate this to clockwise and the light went on. So clockwise always increases the current. So I'm going with the maximum here. Now it is 3.7, let's go 3.8. So 3.8 and the output has dropped a little the voltage of this dropped so so if we say 3.2 that's 100 millivolts drop below that is not acceptable so that's a, what you can get 3.8 ampere with 3.3 that's 12 watts and the input is 2.85 2.85 5 ampere so if you if you disregard this for the consumption of the module so 2.85 and then times 6. Now the input is 6 volts. The output is 5 volts. You can see the 5 volts here. I'm turning it on with 2 ampere. So 2 ampere. That's the input. Now pay attention. We are getting 6 and 5. So this is 6 volts, 6 times 2 ampere, 12 watts. And this is 5 times 2, 10 watts, 9.9. .9. Almost 1 watt is being wasted here. But that's not our concern. So let me go here. 3 ampere. Now it is 3 ampere. If I go 4 ampere, over current protection will not allow it. So let's make it 3 ampere, turn this off and turn it on and it will work. Let's go 3.8. Three point seven. So we are getting three point eight ampere at five volts output. Hundred millivolts drop still acceptable, but uh, the lower the voltage, for example, for three point three for five five volts, we have very little room for voltage drop. But this hundred millivolts is still not uh, right. So if I reduce it, the voltage will increase 3.7. So I will assume that this is, I accept this as 3.7. The module is getting hotter. Let me show you the thermal image of the module as you can see the heat 
the, the heat sink is the coolest part and on the right side is the hot spot 68 degrees Celsius is very cool and this side is hot and the other side is 69 degrees Celsius at this point so this capacitor is 69 degrees I'm using this thermal camera the link for this will be below the video in the description now the input is 6 volts as you can see here and the output is 12 volts you will see it here and let me go with 2 ampere so the voltage already dropped this module 100 millivolts not good this is input current let's go 3 so over power protection OPP kicked in which means 3 ampere is not allowed uh, let's make it 2.9 turn off and turn on so again 2.9 is not allowed the current that I set here is at the maximum so I can rotate it clockwise until it clicks now it's at the maximum it's about 110 millivolts still acceptable and here is the input current now this is 7 ampere at the input if we assume that 35 watt was the input then we are above the value so we have to do is 35 35 divided by 6 we have to be 5.8 so this is very high let's reduce it so that is 6 ampere so 5.7 if we get at the input that is the right value for this device and we are getting 2.4 ampere let me show you the thermal image at this point beside the capacitor is 72 degrees Celsius right at this spot in between these two and here at the middle 71 degrees is very normal because the junction temperature can go to 125 degrees 2.4 ampere at 12 volts we are getting 28.5 watts at the output at the input is 5.7 ampere 6 volts now input voltage is 6 volts output is 15 volts you can see it here let's go with 2 ampere and turn it on so again we are above the limit 5.8 is just the edge so we can get only 2 ampere at 15 volts at the output and it is very cool and safe and efficiency is 84.7 percent now input is 6 volts and output is 24 volts and let's go with 2 ampere as you can see it's 10 ampere at the output and over power protection kicked in so I have to turn this off and make sure it's 1 ampere now the output is on let's go with one amp and at one, one ampere that's the input so six we, on, we want to go 7.8 so I'm gonna increase it by the 100 milliampere from here 1.1 so it jumped 1.2 it jumped so 1.3 that's six ampere at the input 
6 times 6 is now 36, that's above the limit. So 2, 5.7 was allowed. So here we can get 24 volts at 1.2 ampere and efficiency is 87 percent. Let's turn this around. Let's see the thermal image from this side. And around the module it is 65 degrees Celsius. Exactly if I put my screwdriver you will see that this is the hottest spot. And now the input is 6 volts, the output 30 volts. Let's go with 1 ampere. Now it's 5.6, so this is just at the edge 5.65. We cannot go above this at the input. So the output is 1 times 30 is 30 watts. And the input is 5.6 times 6. Efficiency is 89.2%. Let's start with 1 ampere. And here is the input. Let me increase it. 2 ampere. Over power protection kicked in. So let's go back to 3, to 2 ampere, and turn it on, turn it off and turn it on. So you will get 2 ampere at 15 volts, 30 watts, and the input is 2.7 times this, so the efficiency is 92.5%. Uh, for 24 volts at the output, so we get 35 watts divided by 24 volts. Maximum current we are getting is 1.45 and let's test it. 1 ampere, I'm turning it on. So 1 times 24, that is 23.9. And this is the input current here. Increase it a little. So 1.1, I'm going 1.2 and here pay attention because that is maximum, now let's see, this, this cannot go 2.7, 2.3, 2 2.2, that's the maximum that we are getting, that's 1.3, because if I go one more, uh, it's almost at the edge, so, let's go one more. Let's see. Over power protection kicked in. Reduce it. Turn off. And turn on again. 0.4 is not suggested. 1.3. And efficiency is 94.2. With input of 15 volts output. 1.4 ampere is uh, the efficiency is 93 percent. Now input is 12 volts and output is 30 volts. You can see it here. Let's go with 1 ampere. As you can see that's the maximum that we are getting at the input 2.7 ampere and that is 30 watts 29.9 and with 1 ampere and 30 volts output the efficiency is 92.5 percent. Now input is 15 volts and output is 24. You see it here. Let's go 1.3 ampere. And that is the maximum that we could go because the input is 2.1, 2.2. And if I increase it to 1.4, it is just at the edge, 33.5 watts. Efficiency is 93 percent with 24 volts output, 1.4 ampere. Now, input is 15 volts, output is 30. 
Uh, let's go with one ampere. So 15 volts, that's now boosting, doubling it to 30 at the output. And this is the input current here. Let's increase it to 1.1. This has now increased. And that's the maximum for the input. If I go one more, you will see overpower protection should, yes, overpower protection kicked in. So 1.1 would be better. Now I have to turn it off and turn it on. 1.1 ampere is the maximum that you can get with this module. Efficiency for 1.1 ampere is 91%. Now input is 24 volts and output is 3.3 volts. Let's go for 2 ampere. So that's the input current. Because the voltage is very high, we see 0.3. So now we are getting 2 ampere at the output. Many people will have questions about this. It's about power. Multiply this by the current and you will get the, get the power and multiply voltage by the current, you get the power. The output power is always less than the input because of the losses. Let's increase it to 3. So over current protection kicked in because we are not allowed 4 ampere. Turn off and turn on. So we can get 3 ampere. Let's go 3.1. I wanted to see it. 3.2. 3.3. And then 3.4. 3.5. It's almost at the edge. 3.6. 3.7. Ampere and 3.8, so that's the input current. 3.9 might go back, so we got 3.9 but not 4. Dropped, so that's not acceptable. Hmm, almost 150 volts. Let's reduce it. A little 3.8, 3.7, no. If I, if I increase the voltage from here, then it will be unstable when the power disconnects. It will Three point seven so if we get three point eight it will be twelve point three watts and efficiency is now seventy three point two percent it's very low the lowest so far we have seen input is twenty four volts output is five volts we are down converting let's go with three ampere so 3 times 5 is 15 watts. Three point one, three point two, three point three. still good, 3.4, 3 3.5, 3.6, Three point seven, let's see. Three point eight will kick the overpower protection, over current protection, but let's see. It's just at the edge. Output input is one ampere now. Now the efficiency with three point eight ampere is seventy-eight point five percent. So Efficiency increased. Now input is 12, 24 volts, output is 12 volts. 
we are dividing it by half and let's go with 2.8 ampere so that's the input current now 15 1.58 and it is 33.6 that's the maximum that we could get because if I go a little high it will be above 35 and here is the thermal image that I have and the hot spot is this arrow my the tip of my pen which is that inductor that's the hot spot which shows 55 degrees very normal and with 2.8 ampere and 12 volts efficiency is 87.2% now input is 24 volts output is 30 volts let's go with one ampere so it's already one times 30 that's 30 watt at the output and this is the input current 100 milliampere increase so 32 35 watts over power protection kicked in 100 milliampere less so you can get 1.1 ampere 24 volts input and output 30 volts with 1.1 ampere and 30 volts at the output efficiency is 91.6 percent now let's go with the input of 30 volts and output first in this is standard voltage 3.3 volts Let's go with 2 ampere. So that is 6 watt. Two, three. Now 4 ampere over current protection. 4 is not allowed. So let's turn this off. turn it on again so 3 ampere efficiency is with 3.7 uh, ampere and 3.3 volts is 80 percent now input is 30 volts and output is 5 volts let's go with 3.7 ampere that's the maximum that we can get 18.45 watts and with 3.7 ampere at 5 volts efficiency is 81 percent now input is 30 volts output is another industry standard of 12 volts let's go with 2.5 ampere because we know this output cannot be 3.8 ampere and higher but also we have to pay attention to this that it this cannot exceed 35 watts or this cannot exceed 3.8 so let's see I'm increasing the current from here 2.6 and as you can see it's increased 2.7 that's 32 we are getting very close 2.33 and that's the maximum I don't think we can go 2.9 let's see yes over power protection kicked in so turn it off and turn on and with 2.8 ampere and 12 volts efficiency is 88.8 percent input 30 volts and output is 15 let's go with 2 ampere two ampere and the power is now 30 watts so we have to pay attention here let's go 2.1 it become 31 2.2 33 watts so it's very close now maybe now over power protection yes kicked in 15 volts from 30 we make it half 15 33.12 watt and with 2.2 ampere and 15 volts at the output efficiency is 90% now input is 30 volts output is 24 volts let's go with 2 ampere over power protection 2 times 24 was 48 i totally forgot 
let's go 1.4 ampere that's 33.6 and here is 1.26 ampere is the input and we cannot go further because if I go 1.5 it will be within the over power protection and with the 30 volts input 24 output 1.4 ampere efficiency is 89.6 percent now let me show you how how we can charge a battery for the battery you have to know the voltage of the battery for all lithium batteries in general the maximum voltage is 4.2 volts or 4.18 so let's assume 4.2 volts so we have to know that and also the capacity this is 3800 milliampere hour so at what rate you want to charge if you want to know about this the maximum current that this can supply is uh, 3.8 ampere with the test that I've just learned but because this is 3.8 ampere if you do that you will reduce the life of the battery so you will go one ampere less or something like that so let's assume that you want to charge this with one ampere current and the voltage for this is 4.2 volts for one cell then I'm going to show you how to charge this four pieces after that so now for this one 4.2 let's first set the voltage to 4.2 volts the output so I'm pressing it to see the output so I set the voltage at 4.2 next we have to set our current to set the current to maximum of 1 ampere these are the two terminals of the output and we can short circuit it and then set the current do not worry it has protection so I've short circuited that you see over current protection it says so first uh, let's uh, uh, rotate this counterclockwise until you, s you hear a click so when you set it to the minimum you will see the LED the red will turn on do not worry now let's short circuit this and do not worry and uh, now it shows the current this is the current let's turn it slowly and you will see the current here reading I'm going for 1 ampere 0 0.3 that's 300 milliampere 400 500 6 7 8 9 almost and and that's now one ampere if I disconnect this you will see that it shows 4.2 volts now I can connect it to my battery positive to the positive and pay attention negative to the negative and it starts it doesn't allow any current above nine point uh, about above one ampere so this light is slowly turning on if I turn the light off you might be able to see it a little but it's just at the edge because this voltage is very close now what happens is as the current will pour up when this is being charged the voltage slowly increases when the voltage increases this current will be reduced slowly so if this is now 3.8 ampere if I pour 1 ampere per hour it will take 3.8 hours to fill this up so about 4 hours this will be filled up if it was empty fully when you want to connect more than one battery so this is one battery that this is a negative and that's a positive if you want to connect the second battery the positive will go to the next battery this is the second cell 
and if you have third one you will go like this the positive of the second goes to the negative of the third and if you have fourth one the positive will go to the negative of the other one to the fourth one then we have to also decide at what current you want to charge because these are in series the same current will pass through all of them and as you can see here this is the negative and the positive is connected to this and the negative is connected to here the positive in here at the end i have one neg negative and one positive so the last positive is your input and the positive and this is the negative if you want to charge more than one battery this is not recommended because you need a specific charger for each battery to be connected but generally you can charge this but without knowing the exact balance of each cell which is very bad practice but because many people are doing it and I've seen the request I'm just explaining this to you now each cell will be 4.2 volts when it's fully charged so we have to set the sum of 4.2 so if you multiply 4.2 volts times 4 cells, 16.8 volts. So that's our voltage. Let's set our voltage first. So I set now the voltage to 16.8. Keep that in mind. If the voltage increases, this battery will be damaged and the life of the battery will be reduced significantly or they get damaged and permanently disabled and they will be useless let's say you want to charge them at 800 milliampere so for that turn this fully counterclockwise then short circuit this output do not worry and here it shows 246 milliampere here this is always the output regardless if you select the top as an input or output this is always the output and using this we can go for 800 milliampere rotate this clockwise until it reaches 800 milliampere or whatever current you want so 800 milliampere remember if you charge this higher than certain rated current especially uh, this is 3800 milliampere if you charge it at 300,000 milliampere per hour it is called 1c and that is uh, the ordinary charging for this by 8 so now now let me connect the two the wires for this and these are the wires for the battery negative connected and I'm keeping the positive pay attention here and here 800 milliampere is coming to this if I disconnect it you will see it will go zero and 16.6 because because of the constant current the voltage has been reduced because the voltage of the battery is low so now the voltage will fill up slowly as the current fills up the voltage will increase and the current will stop when it reaches 16.8 and here is the input current uh, with the with a voltage of 30 volts at the input now let's have a look at the ripple this is connected via this probe of oscilloscope to my oscilloscope here where you can see it let me turn it on I've set the output voltage to 30 volts and 1 ampere and the ripple as you can see the delta shows 58.8 millivolts and that is at one ampere and now let's have a look at the ripple at input voltage of 6 volts 6.5 and output is 12 volts and I've set the current to the maximum current of 2.7 at this value and as you can see it shows 122 millivolts that's the ripple with the highest current and you saw it was 58 millivolts at the lowest amount of current uh, with this module.
thank you for watching a video from what hour if you learned something and found this useful please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of youtube if you have comment or question please post it at the comment section below i try to answer and reply and don't forget to subscribe so you get updates of my upcoming videos hi welcome to product review by what hour in this video we're going to do the re review of this wuji wz5005 5 ampere 50 volts or 250 watt back converter that can be controlled also via wi-fi of your phone android device i'm going to 